Hello everyone, Rochelle here. Today I'm going to be working through the work basket uh, free quilt pattern that I have on my website. And this is a 16 inch square block and you can add borders to make it an 18 inch square uh, mini wall quilt. So either A, you can make a uh, pillow cover out of this, however your, um, your little heart desires, pick any tutorial that you like. Or um, this is an 18 inch block so I will be working through how to build that today and um, one thing to keep in mind is this is um, a real life video um, nobody's perfect we don't expect you to be perfect here um, we just expect you to be human and um, learn from your mistakes so um, I hope you enjoy the video thanks for joining me hello hello everybody Rochelle here I'm going to go through a tutorial on how to cut um, 60 degree triangles with um, pretty much any ruler that you might have. So first of all, we're gonna start with our regular six by 24 ruler and a width of fabric strip approximately uh, folded in half. So I'm gonna trim this to two and a half inches high by width of fabric. And then I'm just gonna square off the end here at the selvage, take the selvages off. And let me zoom in close here for you. All right, so this is the doubled up with the fabric strip. And if you look on your ruler, you will see that you have a 60 degree line on your ruler. And you also have, might also have 15, 30, 45, and 60. We're going to be focusing on the 60 degree line here. So I like to put a piece of washi tape on here with an arrow pointing to it. And that really helps me figure out where I need to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 60 degree line here. See the washi tape? And I'm going to put it on the very bottom of my strip. And I'm going to get it pretty much as close to the edge here at the end as humanly possible. And then I'm going to cut off this piece here, the end. I'm gonna discard this end. We do not need that. And then I am going to take and line up my, any mark is fine. Um, the bottom of your ruler needs to go on a line and you need to put a quarter inch away from this tip here so there's a tip right there. You need to draw a line a quarter inch away from that line. And I'm using a heat soluble pen and just doing, a, um, doing it here for visibility purposes. So you want to, um, you can just actually maybe just do one at the top and one at the bottom, but this is what I'm using for now. And then um, lining up with this top point and again, using a 60 degree line down. I'm going to put my 60 degree line here, my other 60 degree line, on the very bottom again. And I'm going to line up the very top with the mark that is a quarter inch away on the top part. And I'm going to trim there. And I will have two perfect equilateral triangles that I can sew into my project. Okay, so that is using my regular 6x24 ruler. Um, I also have a couple more rulers here, and we're just going to keep this edge here. Um, this is fine. We have a 60 degree line here that we can continue to use. And I have a plethora of other rulers. This is a mini Hex and More ruler, and you can also use this for um, smaller triangles here. Um, this is, I think it was like five, eight dollars or something like that. Um, you already need to have one line cut here, and that is key. And you line it up like this with a flat tip on the end here, and the 60 degree edge on the edge you already have cut. And so this gives you that quarter inch tip here that you had to draw on if you use your 6x24 ruler, but with this one, I just put a ruler off to the side, so any straight edge ruler, and I can pull this away now, and I can cut 
this line here. And again, I have two perfect 60 degree triangles that I can use in a project. All right, so um, the next one is, I have a four and a half inch square ruler here. And what I did was I have a zero point here. So you start at any point and you measure over three widths. So I measured over one, two, three inches. So a multiple of three, you can also do six. You can also do nine, um, but stick with a, a multiple of three. So I went over one, two, three inches and up one and three quarters inches. So my line intersects right here where this arrow is, right here at three over and one and three quarters up. And I will take that line and I will, you can take this to draw the original line too. I'll line that up on the very bottom of my strip. And like you see here, it lines up nearly perfectly. And we're, um, we're off by like a half a degree here, but or a quarter of a degree, but um, we're really not that picky in this case. So we we'll draw our line or cut this here. Okay, so to cut this other edge here, whoops, sorry, I've got shenanigans going on on the floor here. I also have drawn on here two dots with my dry erase marker. I have drawn one at my zero corner over here and another one at uh, three over and inch and three quarters up. So I can take the same line here and I can line it up with the bottom of my triangle. And I can cut this line here on this side and get two perfect triangles for my project. All right, we have one, two, three more options here. I have a super sidekick ruler that I bought for a project and I think I've used it twice, but if you happen to have one, you can use one of those too. What I also like to do on this one is I have my two and a half inch strip. So I just put a piece of washi tape here and draw an arrow to it. So I just have a quick reference of where I line up my bottom of my strip. And if you see the triangle shape here, here and the flat top and you do the same thing as before you line up the two and a half with the bottom and your flat strip flat piece of the template is here at the top and you cut off this side edge here and you have again two wonderful pieces to use for your project I also have a hexamore ruler that I did the same exact thing to so you have this triangle shape down here your flat top you have your uh, two and a half inch line, line it up with your bottom, and you notice that um, you alternate sides that you cut from. So you'll cut from the left, you'll cut from the right, or um, top, bottom, whatever way you're oriented in. So you'll cut off this edge, and you still have your perfect two shapes. And finally, I have an equilateral triangle. I bought a big one. You can also buy these. Um, I think they come in smaller sizes, no doubt. But this is a, this brand um, is Creative Grids. And it is a 12 and a half inch ruler. And you can do the same exact thing. With this, you line it up with the edge, flat top, and the two and a half inch line on the bottom. And you cut again. So I have again two wonderful triangles to use for my project. So, in summary, um, for cutting triangles, I have a Creative Grids ruler, 12 and a half inch. I have a Super Sidekick ruler. Let me read that. And. I have a hex and more ruler. This. I have a four and a half inch ruler with a couple special markings on it. And you have to test this out beforehand, but you can take and typically rub off 
these dry erase markers or when you're done just use your washi tape or your masking tape pulls right off or I have a mini hex and more ruler and you can finally use your uh, regular 6x24 ruler. Um, there's also smaller rulers, there's probably like um, like 3x18 and whatnot, smaller rulers that um, are available. This is what I have on hand, but as long as it has the 60 degree marks on it here and here, then you are more than welcome to use it. So that is cutting your triangles. So we will move on to the next segment, which is sewing your triangles together. All right, and we're back. Here is the, uh, I'm going to go through the work basket pattern of mine. And for that, you will need one, two, three, four colors plus background color. These little dots I get in the dollar store for probably a dollar for like a thousand of them or something like that. And they come in really handy. I just put the quantity on here and the color and they're easily removable. They don't have a lot of sticky stuff on them, so you can... Uh, put those on without having to worry about damaging your fabric. So you will have um, C1, you have 16 of those. C2, you have 12. Um, your C3, you have eight. C4, you have four. And then you pictured is uh, C5, not pictured is C5. And that will be cut from the wedges template. And we'll be using that a little bit later. So um, that's not an equilateral triangle. So we'll just go through piecing this part. And um, finally, you have 24 C6 pieces. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, uh, if you look in the pattern, I start out with, uh, I will start out with row 4. And row 4 looks like this. You have a, one, two, three, four, we'll start with, uh, yeah, row 4, row 2, sorry about that. Row 2, so we'll start with C2. So C2 row two looks like this so we have a color background and a color so it will look like that so what we're gonna do is you will have to pay careful attention to your pieces here so my color piece has a flat part here and my background piece has a flat part here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip the colored piece over onto my solid or my background piece right sides together and if you notice there's a little bit of my background piece peeking out and I'm going to pin this piece on the edge that I need to sew on we've chosen on this edge and I will quick so that piece, and what you need to do is, um, first of all, you need to check your quarter inch seam. We won't be going through that today on how to do that. That is, um, that's in, I'm sure, a zillion other tutorials online. But what you're going to do is you're going to start at this edge here, and you're going to do a quarter inch seam all the way down. And what should happen is your needle should exit right here on this intersection of their background piece and your top um, C2 or colored piece. So I'm going to sew that real quick here and show you. All right, if you look here really closely, I use a darker thread so you can see it. My thread comes out exactly where that intersection is. I hope you can see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these pieces apart here and I'm going to press the seam open. And I have a little ironing board off to the side here. I'm assuming everybody can figure out how to press a seam open. I hope so. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera here. And what will happen is you will have these little dog ears sticking up here on the top of your piece. And you do not cut these off. So we are going to layer on our next piece, which is another background piece, which looks like this. So I'm going to take my piece again. Whoop. Need to flip this around. 
my point. I need to line up here. I need a flat end, which is on my free end of my background piece, and I need to line it up with a pointed end. So I don't want to line up square and square like this because it's just uh, it's a little bit easier to see and uh, arrange if you keep those dog ears on there, but you want to align it like this. Right sides together, flip that over, and then I will sew on this side and my needle will enter on this point here. And I'm going to press that seam open again. Pressing the seam open creates those dog ears where you will be able to align the next row on top of it. So um, the dog ears really don't do anything for it, um, like design wise. It's just easier. See the dog ear at the top there? And you have one up here. So this dog ear on the next row, you will align those together to get your um, your row two to line up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on a C4 piece and show you how I do that. I'm going to take my C4 piece and I have a tip on my C4 piece and I'm going to line that up with the bottom of the row, so it looks like this in the end, with my dark C4 piece on the bottom. And I'm going to flip it up here, right sides together, and I'm going to align these dog ears. See this is a dog ear down here, and I have the corner of the piece here. I'm going to put that on that piece there, and I'm going to put this tip here, this tip on this dog ear here. And I'm just going to twist it around here so I could pin it. And I'm going to sew on this seam here. So I'm going to sew on my C4 piece. And you should enter right here. See this intersection right here of your C4 piece and your lower triangle. So you need to enter with your needle there to keep your alignment just right. And if you hear my machine beeping, just ignore it. It's running out of bobbins. So it's just letting me know that I need to pay attention to it. And what I like to do for this is I just push this, press the seam up because I'm not worried about dog ears right now. So I'll press that one up or down, whatever way your work basket is oriented. And so on this piece, I have my C, my row four and my row three. Now I'm gonna do row two. So row two, I will grab my color two pieces and my background pieces. And this one looks like this, it has one two, three colored pieces and two background pieces. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before. I'm going to take, and move these off to the side here. I'm gonna take this piece and I'm going to lay it right sides together. I don't know if that side has a right side or not. Right sides together. And I'm going to sew on this edge here and exit where that notch is. And my sewing machine is being naughty. But I will press this piece open here, place the seam open of these two pieces. And there we go, I have my dog ear at the bottom, dog ear at the bottom here, and I have one at the top. 
And I'm going to keep going, just layering on my pieces. I have a free end here, so I'm going to put the flat tip onto the free end and sew that on. And I will exit and enter on the intersection of those pieces here. Again, see the intersection there? and intersection at the tip. So that's how you keep these equilateral triangles, 60 degree triangles, lined up properly. So this block isn't really, um, it isn't very difficult, it's just, uh, you just gotta keep oriented. So otherwise you get yourself in trouble. And again, I'm gonna take my flat piece of this bottom here and put it onto the loose end of this triangle here, right sides together, again, and so, Entering at the intersection of the dog ear points and exiting at the bottom. Pressing the seam open. I accidentally start my iron off sometime during the process, so no wonder my seams aren't pressing properly. Right. So last piece on this row here, I have my pointy end of this background piece with my flat end of my next piece, so my free end with my flat end. Layer those right sides together and sew one more time. Again, entering on the intersection, exiting at the other intersection. Press the seam open, and then we're going to match with the other row using the dog ears that we created along the way. Sorry, I'm shaking you. Whoops. Sorry, I'm shaking you during the process here, but it is necessary. Oops, sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Oh well. All right, so I have a row two. And I have a row three and a piece four here. And what I'm going to do is, you see this dog ear here at the very tip of my row two. And then on my row three, I have this little tiny dog ear here. I will take and I will line up these dog ears here. So I have one at the... Um, and this row here, two, and one at three, and I will take those and line those up and match those so they are exactly lined up on top of one another. And I'm going to pin at that intersection there. Okay. And at the very end here, I'm just going to take my free end or my free piece here and put it at the line it up with the background piece, put a pin in that. You have a dog ear overhanging on that piece. And on this end, I will have my flat piece will line up perfectly with the edge of my other piece. And I will pin that too and sew it and you'll see how the points match up perfectly. Um, what you want to do is you want to sew. You sew your corner seam again. You will enter right here at the edge of the flat top, uh, quarter inch seam all along the way, and then you will have a little piece here, and you will sew right on top of this line here, which is a quarter inch in from the top. And that is how you get your perfect point. So enter at the intersection. sew over the intersection. Then I will exit at the intersection. Okay, so you will have your dog ears lined up in the center here. And you will have your flat piece lined up here and your dog ear lined up here on the edge of the other piece. And 
fold your piece open and at this point you can press however your heart desires but I'm going to press towards this side because there's a little more uh, not quite as bulky seams that way and if you look very closely it's similar to half square triangles you sew over the two seams the other inter intersection of the seams and you'll get a perfect point and you will um, do the other row the same way you will lay out your triangles like so and here's my color um, C1 piece and you do the exact same thing you will have your two dog ears here uh, one here one here and one here and you will have dog ears on this row too and you will flop them up so I will go ahead and do that and show you okay so I have my row one sewn here and you see I have my dog ears here in the middle and I have my two dog ears from the last row that I did so I will take and I will line up those dog ears again for the last time on this this is um this creates a work basket is what one of these triangle assemblies is called and line up this center this middle one here and this middle one here on your row three and four and this tip here should exit like this And this one should exit like this. So, we'll sew this together here real quick for you and we will have a completed work basket. You will enter at the intersection again. And when you get to the intersection of the, uh, where the dog ears meet, you will sew over the seam where your points are in, a, in that middle of the sandwich. Again, sew over the next dog ear underneath at the intersection of those seams. And finally, you will exit at the intersection of those pieces there. So this piece gets pressed. I'm gonna press this down again. Or up probably would be easier doesn't matter it's up to you but uh, during the process you do need to keep in mind to keep those dog ears um, you need to press your seams open and voila there we have it we have a completed work basket and the top one looks like this so you will have a lovely Work basket you will make four of those and um, you will assemble the wedges and your four work baskets and you will make your top which we will be going through in a separate session so congratulations you are well on your way to doing 60 degree triangles with perfect points all right so on to the next lesson we are going to <coughs> cut out our wedges from our C5 fabric and what I did here was I just cut out my template from the paper and um, tested my square. So this test square should measure exactly one inch square. And if it doesn't, you need to try again until it does. And then what I did was I took one of a one of my flat headed pins. They look like this. They're really flat head, and these are ginormous pins. And um pin that down to my background fabric and used a ruler any ruler with a straight edge and cut around every edge being careful not to move the paper on around every edge and through the magic of the internet we have our wedge cut out and you will cut four of these from your c5 fabric and it will look like this and it has a flat tip at one end just like your other, your just like your triangle pieces, but um, these other edges do not. So just focus on one flat tip. And I other already have um, half of my block assembled here with two wedges. 
And I will be putting together my last wedge onto my piece. And I have one, two, three assembled here. So I have two work baskets and a wedge already assembled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take any ruler with a quarter inch measurement on it. Um, it won't work on my table here because I don't have a quarter inch line. And I will take and align my work basket piece with the bottom of the ruler. And see this quarter inch line here? I'm going to put the intersection of my two pieces at the quarter inch mark. And I'm going to pin that in place there at that end. And at the other end, you should have, um, when you first sew your first one on, you'll just have a your square end here. Your square end will be here, and you'll just line that up with, just like you did your other pieces, it becomes a dog ear piece. So just line that up. And when you're sewing your last piece on, it should line up. See the point of the other wedge here? Your flat piece of your loose wedge will line up exactly with that piece there. So you will pin that in place. And I like to work on this edge, this side here, so you can pin it on one side, flip it, and then repin it if you'd like. But I like to work on this side. And again, sew through all the intersections here on each of these points here. So I will sew that on and then iron the seam towards the wedge. And if you'd like to, um, just to check and see that you have everything lined up, you can always baste this wedge on for the first time and then see if you got everything right and lined up and then you can stitch it down with a shorter stitch. Alright, this piece is on. My wedge piece is on. And if you look closely, all my points have been preserved because I sewed through the intersections on the back. So I'm going to press this towards the wedge where there's less bulk in my seams. And you will do this so you will have um, two wedges and two work baskets assemblies. Like this. So you have two of these wedge, wedge, work basket, works basket, and you have another one, a diagonally mirror image of this one. Alright, so what we're gonna do is finally fold this one over onto the other one, and I'm gonna, gonna do my seam again here at the tip. I'm gonna do my quarter inch overlap. And I'm going to pin, and I'm going to pin on the other end here with a quarter inch overlap where my intersection is. And I'm going to work my way to the center. And here, my dog ears, okay, this is the, the one weird part here, um, my dog ears. They are not lined up tip to tip, but they will be lined up side to side. So where the one end of the one point is, you will have, put my pin here, have the intersection of one, they will intersect with one another. So you will pin right through that intersection there, and your points will line up perfectly. So we're going to go down the same same way we did before. <clears throat> Pinning here at each of my points and sewing through those lines 
all the way down and then I will press again so let me sew this here real quick for you time half of your um, piece you'll be sewing on the side where you can sew through your points but on the other end they will be down underneath so you can either a you can do it like I did and just do it through the points here and then just hope and pray that you did a very good job assembling and let's see how good of a job I did assembling. Yes, or you can stop at this point here and then flip it over and sew through here. But it looks like I did a very good job going through my points here. So wow, looks really good. My center's off a little bit, but if I stretch it, it should line up. Or if I can go, I can go back and line that up again. It's not perfect, but I think it's I think it looks very good. So all my points are preserved here and here. So I will press that. And we will get to see the final work block. Work work basket block. Yay! Ta-da! We have our finished work basket block. Bravo, and it should square up to 16 and a half inches um, once it's finished. So I'm going to go and fix this point here. I just need to rip out a few stitches and maybe just do some uh, quilters fudging there, which it happens. No big deal. Nobody's perfect. We're all human. So I'm going to go through and fix that point and um, ta-da! Keep working. You can do it. Okay, so I went through and I pulled out a few stitches on each side of this seam that I just sewed on and I just realigned a little bit, fudged it, and um, re-sewed it and it lines up nearly perfectly, but like I said, we're all human, don't worry about it. Practice makes kind of perfect or practice makes progress. Um, sometimes when you have bulky seams like this, one thing to keep in mind is um, you might need to fudge it a little bit or finagle a little bit. Um, what I use is sometimes a butter knife or a hair marker and I just gently nudge and press down the seam here. You can also get brutal with it and take a small block of wood and a hammer and just kind of beat on it a little bit and make the bulk work out of that seam a little bit so it doesn't look so crazy bulky. But there you have it. Um, from here, you will <clears throat> um, square it up to six and 16 and a half inches square, and you will put the borders on if you want to make it a 18 inch wall quilt. Um, if you want to make a pillow cover out of it, um, you choose your method to do that best. Uh, choose the method you like to do that, and um, make a pillow cover out of it, quilted or not quilted. Um, I think it would look really cool, um, the quilting design, if you did some kind of echoing triangles um, on here in the work baskets and something similar on the wedges. I think that would look really cool. So there you have it. You have your finished work basket block. Nearly perfect because we are human and um, we're not perfect. So I hope you really enjoy this pattern. I uh, really look forward to seeing all of your quilty creations. Ta-da! Happy sewing!